In Danbury, Connecticut, on one street, you will find two story diners. But for breakfast, three brothers got the nod. It's a real family-owned place. It's been around for about 80 years. Uh, we've been here about 50. We, as in the Calavrusas family, starting with dad, Nicholas, mom, Teresa, and son, Stanley, who runs things here today, having certainly worked his way up. I think I was on the cash register and I was nine or 10. I don't think it was uh, much later than that, to be honest. Although a diner has stood on this spot since the 1940s, the styles have evolved with the decades and the geography. We have that gravity that we pull towards like the lower tri-state area. What New Jersey, New York diners kind of are supposed to be. Bit different, bit bigger, still a true diners community clientele though. It's a little bit of everybody. They all just have their own like times, you know. For these regulars, it's every Wednesday morning. It's nice and clean. Yeah. Uh, good food. The food is good. Uh, the waitress is excellent, Lisa. No sensitivity about age with this group, who are all older than the original diner, Durkin's, where all of them were also customers. 97. 97. 91. 91, and your friend is? 93. 93. 95. Oh, 95. 95. Oh my gosh, wow. That's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> She's on the young one here. <laughs> Of course, as with any diner, the only detail that really matters is the food, all homemade here. We bake our own French toast bread. It's really fabulous. As was my Western omelet with a side of hash. Oh, and if you're curious about the name, the answer is yes. There are three brothers, actually. We get to ask that a lot, but that's a real thing. Yeah, <laughs> there's uh, myself and my two other brothers. From Danbury, we drove 30 minutes due south to Wilton, Connecticut, curious about a truly one-of-a-kind place of national significance. The only national park dedicated to American painting out of over 400 parks across the country. It is Weir Farm, the former home and studio of Julian Alden Weir, a prominent painter and founding figure of the American Impressionism movement who worked and lived here from 1882 until his death in 1919. You can see his masterpieces in museums across the country today. He was a very important figure in American art, and that's part of the reason we're here. Visitors today are able to stand over Weir's shoulder, as it were, where he sat at his easel. This is a reproduction of Upland Pasture. It hangs in the Smithsonian American Art Museum in Washington, D.C. now. Original palette and easel? Yes, yeah. and these are some of the pigments, some of the colors that he used to make some of his paints to paint these masterpieces with. Weir was often visited here by prominent colleagues like John Singer Sargent, all drawn to the simple but stunningly vibrant natural landscape. There's this beautiful painterly light, and the landscape has been so well preserved. Today, artists of all kinds continue to come and paint here. Even would-be artists are encouraged to pick up a free brush and try their hand. It's not like a historic story that ended. It's still happening today, and I think that the artists that come here are really excited to be part of that legacy. Only minutes from Weir Farm, we stopped by a sliver of outdoors, which many hope will become a new legacy could have become a highway. Super 7, as it would have been called, would have directly connected Norwalk and Danbury. This rolling ribbon of woods would have been a 20-mile eyesore of asphalt. Portions of Super 7 have been built, mostly down in Norwalk. But as the road was unfolded, there were communities that didn't want this super highway through their area. In 2010, the state instead approved the now ongoing creation of the Norwalk River Valley Trail, which will indeed connect Norwalk and Danbury, but by a recreational gem, a nearly 38-mile multi-use trail, the longest in Fairfield County. The Norwalk River Valley Trail allows me to be in the woods on my bike and be safe, but also not just a cyclist, but hikers, walkers, families. So this is my chariot, That's huh? your chariot. Yep. Trail it. board member right. Mitch Ancona helped get us onto the finished mile of trail in Redding, Connecticut. The other thing I like about this section too, it's a, it's a little bit more undulating, it's a little bit up and down, a little bit more windy and twisty, which is nice. With that, our mile of finished trail was up and we were back out on the road in Redding, but eventually all the miles, all the towns will be connected 
Right now we have about 30% built out. We have another 10% in the pipeline. We're very excited. And to think, it could have all been a highway. As Ted mentioned, the Norwalk River Valley Trail is being completed in sections. In addition to the Reading Mile, the Wilton, Connecticut section is also complete. Could make for a great day trip. A stroll through the rolling meadows on Weir Farm, followed by a trail ride.